that went longer than it was supposed to. Uh, beloved, I'm going to uh, move uh, quickly uh, into um, this other uh, uh, small message. What was the only sickness, uh, disease uh, that Jesus uh, didn't uh, heal and why? What was the only sickness and disease and infirmity Jesus didn't heal and why? Did you know uh, there is a sickness, there is a disease, there is an infirmity that Jesus didn't heal uh, within your Bible? Uh, if, you're, if you're able, I want you to quickly turn to 1 John chapter 7, verse 9. 1 John, excuse me, chapter 1, verses 7 uh, and verse 9, all the way... Um, to the end of your Bible next to Revelation. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Verses 7 and 9. I'll read it. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, notice, beloved, cleanses us from all sins. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want you to notice uh, the word cleanse there and uh, realize uh, that uh, um, that is, uh, again, uh, something we are going to highlight. Jesus never healed anyone with this sickness, infirmity, and disease. What was it? It was leprosy. Leprosy was never healed by Jesus Christ. Did you know that? Did you know leprosy is the only infirmity, sickness, disease within your Bible that Jesus never healed? The great physician never healed leprosy. I'll give you a few scriptures. Matthew 10 verse 8, heal the sick and cleanse the lepers. He didn't heal them. He said, raise the dead. Look at that. Cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Matthew eleven five. 5, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, not healed. And the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Luke 4, 27, and many lepers in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, not healed, except Naaman the Syrian. Luke 7, 22, Jesus answered them and said, Go your way now, tell John what things you have seen and heard, and how the blind see, the lame walk, and lepers are cleansed, not healed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Why didn't Jesus heal those with leprosy? Why didn't he command them to be healed in their life? Because leprosy, beloved, isn't an infirmity. Leprosy, listen to me, this is important. Le leprosy is a sin. Did you hear me? Leprosy is not a disease. It's not a sickness uh, in respect to the physical body. Leprosy is a sin. And according to your Bible, you read 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 and 9, all sins must be cleansed. All sins must be cleansed, not healed. Leprosy was a sin. Leprosy needed to be cleansed, and it could not be healed by Jesus Christ. The only cleansing that you and I have given to us by God through Jesus Christ is His blood. You and I read, it is through the precious virgin blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that can cleanse us from all sins. Why didn't Jesus heal leprosy? Because it wasn't a sickness of the body, an infirmity of the physical body. It was a sin. The actual Hebrew word for leprosy, beloved, is to rebel. It also means it had four Hebrew words to rebel. Bitterness, rage, uh, dishonor, to disobey, to have a stiff, stubborn neck. When you read of leprosy, it is speaking of this, uh, uh, this summary of someone who's in rebellion, someone who is carrying bitterness in their life, someone who is being dishonoring 
in their life. Uh, someone who is uh, periodically filled with rage. Someone who is willingly, continually disobeying God's word and disobeying authority. It means stubborn and stiff neck. Again, leprosy is, uh, is linked to rebellion in God's word. It's linked to these areas. And rebellion uh, and leprosy, uh, uh, again, are, are joined together as one, according to your Bible. I'm going to uh, give you a, 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 a number of examples, uh, and please write down, because it's going to have a, a deep meaning for you and I. Numbers chapter 12, uh, 1 through 10. I, I'm, I'll read it quickly to you. Numbers chapter 12. Uh, 1 through uh, 10, it's about Miriam. And uh, many of you are familiar with uh, Miriam, but again, beloved, we have a number of people that are uh, new to the ministry, so just uh, uh, allow me to uh, read this, Numbers chapter 12, 1 through 10. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of uh, the Ethiopian woman that Moses had married, for he married her, and he said, uh, and, and uh, Miriam said, uh, has the Lord indeed only spoken to Moses? Has he not spoken also to you and I? And the Lord heard it. Verse 3, and the man Moses was very meek above all men were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. He said, now come out of the tabernacle there. And the three came out, and the Lord came down in a pillar and cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Verse 6, And God said, Hear me now and hear my words. For if there is a prophet among you, the Lord, I, the Lord, make myself known unto him in a vision or in a dream. But my servant Moses is not so, for he is faithful in all of my house. Verse 8, and with him I speak mouth to mouth, not in dark speeches, but in the likeness of the Lord shall he behold me. Wherefore then, why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Verse 9, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and God departed. Verse 10, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, watch, Miriam had leprosy. Notice, white as snow. Remember that. Leprosy, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam and beheld she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, O oh, my Lord, I beseech you, lay not uh, the sins upon me, for we have done foolishly and we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of the flesh is consuming her. Uh, verse 13, and Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, O oh God, please, please. And verse 14, and the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed? Take her outside of the camp for seven days. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed uh, without, uh, journeyed not until Miriam was brought back into the camp. And so, beloved, we see the first example I want to share with you is that leprosy was tied in to tremendous dishonor. We've done a lot of teaching on dishonor. And she was dishonoring first and foremost to God and to Moses. Has not God spoken to us as well? We can hear too from God. She was filled um, with uh, uh, bitterness and anger. And she was filled with uh, rebellion and and. Uh, within her own life and thus she uh, contracted a sin uh, called leprosy. Did you know Miriam's name in the Hebrew literally means rebellion? That the name Miriam means rebellion in the Hebrew. She was rebelling against God, rebelling against his authority, which was rebelling against God himself. And God said if her natural father uh, was here, and she had spoken in such a dishonoring manner. He would have spit in her face. And God said, take her outside of the camp, okay? 
And it's important for you and I to realize that those uh, that are, are continually living in a place of, of, of leprosy, of bitterness, and of rage, uh, and of rebellion, and living in a place uh, of stubbornness and stick, uh, stiff-necked, uh, there has to come a, a, a church authority if they're in that congregation and to remove them uh, from outside of the camp, outside of the camp. We find in 2 Kings, uh, another example here, uh, verses 5, 1 through 15. I w won't take time to read it, beloved. It's so rich. I'm going to just give you a handful of examples. But we find here Naaman, who was a high commander within the Syrian army. And the Bible says that uh, uh, underneath his, uh, his medals and his chest, uh, he was leprosy. He had leprosy in his own life. And he sought uh, one to uh, heal him. And uh, he couldn't find anyone within the, uh, uh, the Syrian uh, territory. And so um, his maid servant uh, uh, said, I know one in uh, Israel and he is a prophet of God. You need to go to him. And so uh, he made his way and, and filled his uh, uh, chariots and horses with uh, gold and silver and clothing and gifts. And he brought them to the prophet Elijah. Uh, Elisha uh, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and said to him, here, I want to give you these. Uh, won't you heal me of this leprosy? Uh, and uh, he, he, I think it was Elijah, forgive me, beloved, uh, said, to, said to him, I want you to go and to uh, um, uh, dunk seven times in the river Jordan. And watch what he said, and you will be cleansed. And Naaman became so angry, the Bible says, so filled with rage and filled with rebellion, the Bible declares. And, his, and he said, I will not do it. Why couldn't he tell me to go to these other two uh, rivers that are beautiful and pristine and, 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 and to uh, rinse and to uh, be submerged in those? And he tells me to go to the dirty waters of the Jordan. I refuse to do it. You see why he had leprosy, okay? There was rebellion in him. There was a, uh, a stiff-necked uh, uh, life within him. And his servant said, look, uh, if he would have told you to do that, you would have done this. And if he would have told you to do something else, he would go and do this. And so he finally submitted uh, to what was said to him. And he dunked seven times and submerged seven times in the River Jordan. And the Bible says that he came up out of the water cleansed. And he was... His, his skin was as the skin of a baby, the Bible says. And he hurried back with his chariots filled uh, with, with uh, uh, gold and silver and jewels and clothing. And he says, let me give you this gift, prophet. Uh, and, and Elijah said, no, I'm not going to receive anything from you. Wow, that is really a test, isn't it, of the uh, situation and the heart of a man or a woman. Certainly there are times, uh, again, of receiving such a, uh, a gift, and God would honor that and direct people to do certain things. But if that man or that woman smells something uh, wouldn't look right uh, in that situation, they should defer and, and trust God. And Elijah said, no, I, I'm not going to take anything from you. I don't want um, anyone within uh, the world to think uh, Syria, uh, to think that somehow that uh, this took place because of this kinds of situations. All of that to say that as the uh, uh, commander Naaman took off back to his home and back to his country, um, Elijah's servant Gehazi chased him down and said, hey, my master told me to tell you he will take the coins and the gold and the silver and the clothing. He needs it for he has had people come to his home and he wants to honor them with a gift. And so uh, Naaman gave him gold and silver and clothing and jewels. And as he came back, the Bible says that Gehazi hid those. And as he came in to the prophet Elijah's home, Elijah, by word of knowledge, said, where have you been, Gehazi? And he goes, I've not been anywhere. I've just been out uh, doing uh, menial things. And he said, no, I saw you go and, and go to Naaman. And what did you do? I didn't do anything. And he said, I saw you take those gifts from him. And what was upon uh, Naaman now is upon you. And this servant Gehazi became leprous. The Bible says white as snow. 
white as snow. Again, leprosy isn't a physical uh, sickness and a disease. It's a spiritual issue that Jesus cannot heal. It is a sin that must be cleansed within your life and mine, within your life and mine. A third uh, example, beloved, just for your notes, is 2 Kings 26, 15 through 22. And it was King Uzziah of Judah. Beautiful section of scriptures and pretty much the same thing took place. The Bible says that God was blessing him uh, incomparably and, and, and raising him up and his heart became proud and he began to try to offer within the tabernacle uh, uh, and uh, 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 incense that was only uh, supposed to be done by the priests. And the priest told um, this king U, uh, Uzziah, don't offer uh, incense uh, to God that has been given to us uh, to do that. And he got angry with the priests and he shunned them and he went into the tabernacle and began to offer uh, this incense up to God. And the Bible declares that he became leprous as white as snow in his life. He was, he was disregarding, he was disobeying God's word, and he uh, had a, a stubborn, uh, a willful uh, desire to do such, and he became leprous in his life. And uh, lastly, beloved, is uh, uh, Isaiah 1, chapter 1, 2 through 6. This leprosy wasn't about an individual, it was about a nation. It was about a nation, and it was the nation of Israel. Let me read it to you. Listen, heavens and hear earth, for the Lord has spoken. Sons, I have raised you up, Israel, and brought you up, but you have revolted and rebelled against me. For even an ox knows its owner, and a donkey knows its master, but Israel, you, you do not know me. For my people do not understand, O sinful nation, people weighed down with guilt, your children are evildoers, sons who continue to be corrupt. They all have abandoned me. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from me. Where will you be? Why will you be stricken? And as you continue in your rebellion, watch now what he says. Your head is now sick, and your heart is faint. And from the sole of your feet, even to your head, there is no health in it. What is that describing? Only bruises, slashes, and raw wounds now ooze from you. Not pressed out, nor bandaged, nor softened with oil. And he goes on to say, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove, an evil, remove the evil deeds from my sight. Beloved, do you see what's happened to them? The entire nation was leprous. The entire nation from the soles of their feet to the crown of their head. Now, here's, here's where some misunderstanding takes place. It goes on uh, to say here. Come now, let us reason together. Please listen. God says, though your sins are as scarlet, they have become white as snow. Though they are like red, crimson, they shall be like white wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The common understanding or interpretation of that closing uh, uh, aspects in Isaiah chapter 1 is that, uh, you know, our sins will become, uh, they were scarlet and red, and they will become white as snow. But what's really happening here, if you let me unteach some of you, it's, it's this, that um, the leprosy moves from, from, from red. It moves from this, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, sins in their life and, 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 and at its full-blown maturity of, of, uh, of, of sickness, if you will, it becomes white. It becomes white. And so we see what God is endeavoring to do is he says, now look, I'm trying to help you. I don't want 
this to become any worse in your life. You, you're already red. You have become uh, red as, as crimson. And if you continue on in this uh, um, aspect of living your life this way and continuing to live with, with bitterness and continuing to uh, this uh, direction of, uh, of, of rebellion towards my word and disobedience towards it, if you continue, then your sins are going to be as uh, white as snow. They're going to be full-blown leprosy like we read to you with the examples. He wasn't saying this, that your sins, although they're red, are going to become uh, white as snow. He was referring to the, uh, um, the progression of full-blown leprosy, a full-blown uh, sickness that was going to happen uh, within that sins, within their own lives. Do you understand what I'm trying to uh, share with you? It wasn't again that, the, uh, uh, that, uh, that there was going to be their scarlet sins uh, uh, removed and they would be as white. It was that they would continue on in their sins. Again, their leprosy was going to be full blown. It was going to be white as snow like Miriam and like uh, 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 Naaman and like uh, Uzziah and like uh, the examples I gave you. He was talking to them as a nation. This is what was going to happen to you. Okay. Now quickly, the leprosy in the natural first moves to the nose. The nose is uh, the uh, uh, headship gift to smell. And so uh, uh, leprosy in the natural begins to attack the, the nose. It begins to eat it away. And so the individual can't smell any, uh, can't smell anymore. And so spiritually, uh, the nose represents um, discernment, the uh, ability to discern and to, uh, and to smell uh, uh, people and situations and circumstances uh, to be a warning for you and die and also to be a blessing it's actually one of the gifts of the nine uh, gifts of the spirit that can grow in your life as well and so because of the dishonor and the bitterness and rebellion uh, uh, we, we won't see people and discern them correctly we will become cynical and we won't, we won't uh, discern situations properly. Why? Because of leprosy. Again, leprosy has to be cleansed. It's a sin uh, within my life and within yours. Is there any bitterness within you? Is there any rebellion towards God's word and, uh, and what he's asking you and I to do? Is there, is there a resistance to him? Is there bouts of deep rage in your life and mine? It needs to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I come to you and I recognize my spiritual leprosy and, uh, and now it's attacking my nose. I don't discern right. Now, I, I accuse people of certain things. I think this is what they're saying and what they're doing when in fact, it's probably not any of that at all. It's leprosy within someone's life. And the second area, um, well, let me just share this scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 32. Paul said about communion, whoever eats this bread and drinks the cup of, this, of our Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. Watch now. Everyone should examine themselves before they eat uh, the bread and drink the cup. For those who eat and drink, watch, without discerning the Lord's body of Christ, eat and drink judgment upon themselves. That is why many, notice his words, many amongst you are weak, sick, and a number have fallen asleep, literally died. But if, we are, but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, we are judged in this way by the Lord. We are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned uh, with the world. What is he saying? He's saying that there are many, and he was talking to the church of Corinth, okay. And he's saying because of leprosy, uh, now we're not discerning the body of Christ, not just the physical body, but you and I are his body and we're not discerning people well. Uh, leprosy has eaten the nose and we don't discern them well. And he says now what's happening? Many, many, he said, are weak, sick, and many here have fallen asleep, actually died. And so if there is someone sick, you have to um, go through the progressions. What's the origin of this? Where is it coming from? Because, beloved, leprosy can cause many within the body of Christ to be sick, 
to be weak, uh, to actually uh, uh, fall asleep and to perish. I know one man who has already called me uh, last week and he was going through um, severe times of weakness and uh, severe times of being sick and, 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 and it was becoming paramount within his life and I was uh, endeavoring to ask him about his heart and bitterness and, and stubborn and uh, rebellion and, and uh, because he would begin to just release this uh, barrage of how he was feeling about uh, peace people and family etc etc and there's been no cleansing of the leprosy within his heart so he was like cast the demons out of me I said I don't know if those are demons in you okay let's go back and see if this is leprosy within your own life he said now discern the Lord's body properly and lastly in the in leprosy the second thing that leprosy in the natural begins to do it it begins to eat the eyes that means there's no vision. Vision becomes dim. Vision uh, becomes lost. And then uh, your scripture says that Jesus said, now those of you that have leprosy and have been cleansed, watch, go and show yourselves to the priest. It was the only sickness, infirmity, disease that Jesus required men and women to go and show themselves to the priest. After he would heal those that were deaf, after he would heal those that were lame, he didn't tell them, go and show yourselves to the priest. It was only the leper. The priest was uh, an authority within the leper's life. The priest was one who was hopefully going to discern whether that um, dishonor is out of them. That bitterness is out of them. That unforgiveness is out of them. It was the priest who was going to give a final jurisdiction on whether that leper was truly cleansed. He said, now, uh, those that you have spoken about and you have said, go and, and, uh, uh, and you've received cleansing, now go and, and, and return to that individual and ask them to forgive you. Uh, ask them that you have harbored uh, a bitterness towards them. Uh, uh, share with them and pray with them. You who know those who have ought against you. Make sure you go to them and, 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 and release your heart to them. And release your heart to them. Now, beloved, I don't know if I have any more time <laughs> in this whole situation. I think I've gone uh, over an hour, and so uh, I think what I'll do is I'll come back um, and the next time we're together and we'll conclude uh, probably the victorious Christian life. I got another solid hour in that. And then I want to, hopefully God wills, uh, we'll go over um, uh, a, a major deception uh, why many Christians, um, I say that, word won't be saved a major deception why many Christians won't be saved and uh, again hopefully maybe some geopolitics and spiritual things what's happening uh, within uh, within the world that you and I live in so uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and, and pray this morning father I again I'll just lift up uh, the four uh, coverings that, uh, that we must have uh, in our own lives today. And I pray that uh, we would not let the birds of the air steal the seed today, that there would be a willful obedience, and that uh, we would actually uh, impart that into our lives, uh, that we might not find ourselves in the same path, um, stumbling and falling and bringing a reproach first to you and and to our own lives and to so many others, a reputation possibly that was built, lost in a, a moment's time. Uh, I, I pray for um, each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. I pray for all of those um, that are um, underneath fallen leaders. Oh God, that you would keep them and hold them. And oh God, I lift up um, this dynamic of leprosy. And I, I pray if there is uh, any of those areas within our own lives that are red, that we would not allow them to become white as snow, full-blown leprosy in our lives, that we would come and, and uh, ask for the blood of Jesus Christ and repent before you and to be cleansed. And if needed, go and show ourselves to the priest, uh, to those that possibly we have held 
um, grudges and have uh, held uh, areas within our lives that should have been um, forgiven and uh, even forgotten. Um, I thank you for uh, the beautiful people um, listening and watching today in the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope to see you in a couple of weeks. God bless you.